So, Bob, tomorrow you'll be giving us a presentation on sovereign wealth funds. Obviously, those have had a huge impact, particularly in the last six months, as they've come in to rescue various banks and, uh, and their influence is increasing. What would be the impact that you see of the sovereign wealth funds in, as, in a way it affects the role of the Chief Risk Officer? The roles of the uh, sovereign wealth funds, I mean, as we well know, have been quite significant recently. But if anything, they're going to grow, not merely because their size will grow, but their influence uh, in importance in the risk management area. First, for the, the, the manifest function of these funds is to help their countries diversify risk uh, and to provide uh, buffers in times and in intergenerational transfers uh, for, for the country. Uh, that inherently is involved in risk. As a buffer, it has to uh, be prepared to offset uh, shocks that can come from anything from reserve currencies uh, to uh, debt management to shocks to the, to the um, uh, economic system of the country. But beyond that, um, sadly, as we all know, uh, the hedge fund industry has been just devastated. Now, we won't know the magnitude of that probably till after the new year. But at best, it's going to be very, very, very difficult. Uh, so we have the functional role played by hedge funds, principally that of intermediating uh, 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 institutional rigidities around the world, uh, being on the other side, providing liquidity, liquidity shock. Uh, their capacity to do that function has, has been vastly impaired. Much the same story, I think, is going to hold for prop trading desks of investment banks, which have now become banks and therefore can't take the same kinds of risk uh, that they had in the past. And I see sovereign wealth funds as a, a natural uh, new institutional solution for preserving those functions. Uh, and so I, I see there that's quite important both to the risk manager who may be advising such funds, but also to the risk manager who's advising others who are going to be interacting in the marketplace and wants to answer the question, who is going to handle this? What entities will do it? How do we think about liquidity and other risk elements absent the presence of the hedge funds and the prop trading desks? Uh, I think the other thing that's going to be quite uh, expansive for sovereign wealth funds is we're going to have some new sovereign wealth funds that we didn't know we were going to. In particular, the United States, the UK, and, and much of Europe, out of this awful crisis, they, as we know, are acquiring literally trillions in assets of all kinds. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do about trying to uh, um, put these assets back into the private sector uh, after the, 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 the storm pass, but whatever's done, it's going to be a monumental task taking years. And I would think that something like a sovereign wealth fund structure de facto would become a, a very uh, effective way for these governments to hold these unusual assets and manage them uh, properly. So the, the very, the very uh, role and, and capacity and breadth of, of the sovereign wealth funds, I think, will be expanded quite, quite significantly. Okay. Thank you so much for doing that. So, uh, Bob, we just heard from Professor Schiller about bubbles, and he started his presentation with a comment that uh, the current crisis was a failure of risk management. Putting that behind us, what do you see there on the horizon for the risk manager in the future, and what are the bright spots that you perhaps see coming out over the next 12 months? Well, I think the, uh, the statement was a failure of risk management is either a tautology, since things didn't work out, uh, or it deserves much closer scrutiny. I, I would suggest, in fact, that it hasn't been a failure of risk management in the sense of the risk managers, but perhaps that we need even more resources put into serious risk management, the kind of discuss at a conference like this and the people here. Uh, in particular, I see uh, a role for the risk managers immediately in helping uh, the various uh, authorities to formulate sensible uh, regulatory changes which are inevitably coming. Uh, these include, I think, being able to get better data uh, to be sure that the regulations put in don't impede unnecessarily the functions of the various institutions meant to be regulated. And uh, I think that we will uh, see from this that, in fact, at the senior levels, senior management of institutions, uh, their boards, 
and their overseers, their regulators. The problem was not too many risk management, too much technology, but too little and too little knowledge. And if senior overseers and management don't have a core understanding of risk management, they can't possibly interpret or make use of the tools and the advice that comes from risk managers. So we need to find ways of getting the core and balance of risk management to the most senior levels. And I see uh, out of this crisis that it will become very apparent how important the risk management is, not only for protection of the entities, but also as a means for uh, creating value and growth. So that would mean really good news for risk management in spite of uh, Professor Schiller's comment. So I guess that's a bit of an upbeat uh, well, I, I'm not. These guys will become more valuable, more important, and need to be more senior. Uh, yes, and at least have one se really senior officer within each of those groups, including the board, who really understands it. Yes, of course, there everyone's at blame. We have the long list we have, and there's much to be taken care of. But in terms of structurally in need, I, yes, I am optimistic because uh, when you start to analyze these, you really see that it was a failure if there were failures of uh, adequate risk management or adequate of the, of, of the sophisticated tools, not that the tools failed. And I think there's an occasion now to go into the popular view that somehow the world has changed dramatically and all the things that we have done, all the principles we've used of the past are, are no longer operative and that we have to go on to some new esoteric things. I think when we actually look at this carefully, at least preliminarily, I think that the base foundations of risk management that have been employed still hold, and that uh, in that sense I see it in an optimistic framework for the industry.